I used the term non-linear earlier today. Okay. You've used it a little bit. I picked it up from you. Okay. Well, can you explain this idea of non-linear? And even if we uh, apply it to okay, the so, world. So, so let's, a very simple example. Uh, let's say we take a, we measure all of our heights in this room. And the number we come up with, if we go out to Melbourne today and get the other three million people that are here, our height won't, the average height here won't differ much to what we see out there. So that's a linear system where the, there's no volatility in the averages or the numbers you're going to create about what we find in this room is, going to be high, is largely representative of what's going to be out there. Now if we took the wealth in this room and we averaged it, it's going to differ a lot if you go to, what's like a really high-end suburb here? Uh, Brighton. Brighton. If you go to Brighton, then our average may be way below or way under versus if you go to a n not so wealthy suburb. So with there, the average that we get in this room is going to be useless as a data point to tell you what's happening out there. So there's a kind of kind of give you an analogy of the linear and non-linear. The other part, I guess, to bring it back to systems is, is that in the non-linear world, what you think you know is probably wrong. Okay. So as a result, if you, they expect surprises. So for example, if, if you gave me 10 transactions and said, you know, make me a PL on this, you could give it to any bookkeeper on the planet and you'll get the same PL. It's going to be a little bit different, much like the marketing example I gave, that, you know what, okay, I've got a new hair care product that I want to launch. Each and every one of us will have a different marketing plan for it. And that volatility is what's, what's generally presented by the non-linear thing. Yeah. Does so, uh, yeah, and I think the ability to spot those non-linear opportunities as the business owner, that's like one of your skills. Uh, and you need to have the space to be able to actually spot the opportunity. And I had the insight the other night because Nick flew in last night and, and we went out for dinner. And then I'm thinking, you know, I've just done my slide deck and I've tell, told you about optionality and, you know, all the potential upside. And then this morning I've gone, hang on, there's probably negative optionality as well. Correct, yeah, absolutely. So, for example, banks are negative optionality because they make, so let's say CBA comes out and say, we made seven billion this year, they're not going to make 50 billion next year. Um, a Facebook, or maybe not Facebook anymore, but like a really young company coming up may. So, <coughs> while th we may get comfort in the fact that the bank is making seven billion dollars a year, let's say they, tomorrow we have a property market crash of some sort or whatever, then there will be no bank left. So. The upside is largely capped. The downside is all the way to zero. Whether as Facebook five years ago or when they listed or something, uh, downside was, was not much there because they weren't well known with only but upside. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's, yeah, so hopefully that kind of. And when we talk about optionality, so we're now, we've talked about non-linear, things are a little bit random. You can't really plan for it. Um, then we, you, you've mentioned optionality. Yes, yeah, so, so, so options are a way to tame that, right? Because you can't get rid of that. You can't get rid of the fact that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And no, none of us do. No, nobody has a crystal ball here. So, uh, so how, do you, how do you tame that? Well, you tame that. Okay. So l let's translate that to, let's say, the, 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 the recent crypto craze. Um, let's say beginning of, of, of 2017, when you saw the, the curves going up, if you had sold your house and put all your money in it, then you would have ended up with that guy that I showed where he lost nine million. But had you put 10% of your money in there and you were realistic ab or about managing the risk that you were taking, you could, have, you could have done really well actually. You would have sold in December at 19,000 and bought it, I don't know, three, four grand and you probably wouldn't be in this room today. But the so the point is that, that it's managing that risk and appreciating that you are wrong at all times. It's almost like, uh, the book written by the guy who ran Intel for many years, Only the Paranoid Survive. There's a lot of truth to that. That because you can't tame the real world, the way to do it is to make sure that you don't expose yourself too much to it, or that the exposure you do, do take is going to be to stuff that is going to have a huge upside and control the downside as much as possible. So in business, the more optionality that you can create for yourself, the better. If you kind of narrow yourself into a really tight corner, you don't really have that much room to move. Whereas if there is optionality, you've got different choices. I'm curious to yeah. know, is there a time then when we should 
reduce down and let's say we double down on something, we'll reduce our optionality, but this is a sure thing. Or do you think optionality... Yeah, because, well, well sure, sure thing show, uh, shows up. Yes. As we start having to have traction. So let's say I run a new ad campaign and all of a sudden it's like, boom, rather than getting the usual you know, 1% conversion, I'm getting 25% conversion. Well, that's a good indicator. Well, let's just put more money in this. Yes, yeah. Okay, so that's... That's it, the it, listening. It, that's all yeah, your numbers. Correct, yeah. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're waiting until it turns up rather than you going beforehand, this is the thing that's going to blow up. There's no way to know that. This question might be outside um, what you've been talking about, but you've just talked about the cryptocurrency craze um, and the crash, and we've, we've, we see it over and over and over. You know, I've just lived through the mining crash. With that... Um, in terms of being able to keep your optionality, why why do we as human beings and as business owners continue to do it? You know, wh why why do so many people get sucked into the fact that there's going to be you know a coal boom for the next two thousand years, or there's going to be a Sydney apartment boom for the next <laughs> fifty years. years? Why why as human beings do we not take that on board and put that into our business yeah, well planning? Yeah, we we don't because uh, the groups that we roll with or are in, uh, we, we tend to take on the view. It's the, the gr gr group think is a, is a big problem. So anyone who got into crypto had friends who, who went into crypto. Everyone who's really long property has friends who have property. Anyone who went long mining boom holds a lot of mining stocks. Everyone who thinks that banks don't collapse has a lot of banks in their portfolio. It's just, yeah, it's, it's cognitive dissonance, right? You, you, you can't ha act this way and then have this opposing thought. But that's the secret. It's to, ha is, is to always say, well, what if my, the opposing thought is the one that's correct? Now what? And that's what tames you. Unfortunately, as human beings, we don't like to be tamed. Can I just say something in response to your, your thing too? Um, in addition to that, which is a really good point, Nick, um, my take on it from my standpoint is that um, human nature is that we oftentimes want to get to the end result as quick as we can with as little pain as we, as we can. So we buy in quite easily on the boom, right? And then of course, the minute you see your brother who's never done anything to do with banking telling you to buy Bitcoin, you, need, you know you're not right there not to buy Bitcoin. But I think that's part of the human nature and why we don't do it in business is that we have this, uh, this urgency where we feel like, oh, you know, there's all these other examples of people who do really, really, really well, and I want to do it too, so let me see if I can shortcut it by doing the investment in this or to put all my money in that. And then we hope that it's going to come to fruition, but the odds are when you look at the bigger scheme of things, it's a very small percentage of people who make their success that way, um, but we all have this... It's like primordial desire to try to get to the end or that result quickly. That's what I think, which is why business yeah, owners So one of the other things is like things like Facebook, they, they kind of uh, amplifies that because the algorithm keeps showing you crypto if you like crypto. So all of a sudden you think like, damn, I'm going to miss out. Yeah, but it's the algorithm messing with you. Um, one thing, and I'll stand next to you just because yeah. you've got the mic. Um, I, I was also going to just mention uh, uh, Nick's unique ability and unique skill uh, is the ability to uh, hold two opposing thoughts. I'll always come together, come, come, come with an idea and Nick, regardless of what the idea will, will also challenge it and come from the opposite view. And it's really easy to get stuck in a mindset and just think, oh, that's the way things are. Uh, and it's not really till you challenge it. Every, has everybody heard that story about the person who there was, you know, the mum who was preparing the turkey uh, and she had her daughter there and she chopped the ends off the turkey and put it into the oven and started cooking. The daughter said, why do you chop the ends off the turkey? And the mum goes, oh, I have no idea. Just my mum's always done it. Let's call her. So they get the grandma on the phone and say, why did we chop the ends off the tops of the turkey before we put it in the oven? And the grandma goes, oh, yeah, that's right. We used to have an oven and it was really small and we couldn't fit the turkeys in. So we chopped the tops off. And now that's just the way that things are done. And it's so often that happens where, where you just you think something is that way because you might have tested it a couple of times uh, and oftentimes that's when you miss out that's reducing optionality yes yeah, so, so to me like absence of evidence is not evidence of absence just remember that i think we finish on that that's right all right <laughs> <laughs>